There have been many crazy underdog stories this season like Stuttgart, Bologna, Jorna, and even Aston Villa. But one that stands out to me the most this year is Stade Bretois, also known as Brest. Just last year, they were fighting relegation almost every week, but today they've been one of the most surprising League One teams, placing third in the 2023-24 campaign, which is the highest place they've gotten since the establishment of the club in 1903. Bretois will also feature in the Champions League next season for the first time in club history, being one of the lowest value clubs in the whole competition. So you must be wondering, what is the secret behind the rise of Stade Bretois? Let's begin with a brief history lesson from 2019. Five years ago, Brest were able to secure a second league finish in Ligue 3 and got automatic promotion to the first division for the first time in six years. Under manager Oliver Del Oglio, they were able to survive the 2019-20 campaign, finishing in 14th. This may come as a surprise, but this was one of the best seasons that the club has had in years. And considering the players in their squad, they had done quite well. Moving forward, Brest made zero signings ahead of the next campaign, and fans were gearing up for another season of mediocrity. But Brest Tau would go below their expectations and be fighting relegation all season. And right before it seemed like it was all over for them, they secured their safety on the last day of the season, finishing 17th. At this point, fans were calling for some change after years of underwhelming football. So the board would sack to Oglio, and bring in Mikhail Derzakarian, a man with lots of experience managing in Ligue 1 and would hopefully turn around the club. However, the next year was much the same story where Brest would finish in 11th, which was the highest they've finished since 1990 at that point, but still not results they could be excited about. They did go on a six game winning streak, which was a new club record, so there was a little bit of improvement. And for a change, the optimism of the fans was starting to grow. In the 2022-23 season, things would get particularly hard. In the beginning of the year, they were in and out of the relegation zone and having a really hard time scoring any goals. The club was not in the right frame of mind and the team's form was starting to tank bad. In October, they decided to get rid of Zakarian and carry on with a caretaker manager. But that didn't fix the problem. They were still not playing very well and it looked like the club would have to accept the fate of relegation. At the start of January, they were sitting in 17th. So the club decided to take a gamble. They brought in a certain Eric Roy, a relatively inexperienced manager who last managed a club 12 years ago. But when he did manage the team, he was pretty atrocious. He took charge of OGC Nice in 2011 and almost got them relegated. So instinctively, most fans were asking why they had brought him in. His first few matches managing the club were abysmal, only scraping two wins in his first 10 matches, and the team only scored 12 goals. And in the broad scheme of things, they were not playing good. It seemed like taking the risk of hiring Eric Roy might not be paying off, as they were losing to teams they should have beaten and have been able to beat in the past. Although, after a very close 2-1 loss to PSG where they conceded in the last minute to an Mbappe winner, it was clear that there was something special about how Eric Roy had Brestois playing. More on that later. Near the end of the season, Brest started to win more games and would end up finishing in 14th place. Barely surviving and Eric Roy saw his stay at Brest get extended for another year. After all, he showed a lot of potential. But before I continue to explain how the 2023-24 season went, if you could do me a favor and subscribe, it would really help me out. Thank you. The beginning of the 2023-24 season was like every other year. No one really expected them to do well. Cette semaine, j'ai choisi de mettre le Stade Brestois. Ce Stade Brestois, bon, bah là, c'est de la lutte pour le top 15. Je pense que tout le monde va à peu près. Eric Roy had made some interesting transfers at the beginning of the season, however, signing eight different players for just 3.5 million euros, all of which are names you're probably not going to recognize. And by no means was this squad star-studded. The whole team's market value was less than that of Mbappe. Surely they would not survive this year in Ligue 1, but the club will be at a major turning point. As far as preseason went, Brest were excelling compared to their past form. They beat all the lower level teams, but you would want to pay more attention to how they did against Cagliari and Rennes. They did lose to Rennes, but only by one, which was far less than usual when looking at their head-to-head -head record. And to the surprise of everybody, they drew Cagliari. This was the beginning of the rise for Stade Bretois and a new era of the club. And to the surprise of everybody, including their own fans, Bretois were able to come away with a win in their first two games against Lens and Le Havre. These matches were one of the best examples of this team in the last 20 years and definitely made a statement across the league. The next 10 matches Brest would play were tough and they would only win 3 out of those 10, taking a huge loss against Monaco and Lille, which were statement matches in terms of becoming an elite team in the French division. So far, none of their so-called star players were performing and the team looked to be stagnant in terms of their ability. Something finally clicked by around the 13th match day. It's hard to put a specific finger on it, but they started to become impenetrable. They're going to a club record on beating streak, drawing teams like PSG and Nice near the end of January, but also beating some decently strong teams in the league like Montepelli and Strasbourg. However, most notably, a 1-0 win over Marseille in February. This saving grace in four must be credited to some star player or mastermind tactics, but no. You're probably not shocked when I say that there are no outstanding players on this team. The top scorer only has eight goals this season, and the score sheet is pretty even from top to bottom. There is something special about how Eric Roy had his team playing and how they connect with each other. 
As Brestois moved into the final matches of the season, it was all coming down to the final match day. Following their 2-0 loss to Monaco, Brestois sat in third place, which means they had secured your in football, but a top four finish isn't guaranteed. They had four matches left in the campaign, and they all had to be must wins. Rennes, Nantes, Stade des Rams, and Toulouse could ultimately be deciding the future of Brestois. First up, they played Rennes, and it was a crazy match. Brest went down 2-1 in the first 10 minutes and would equalize right after the start of the second half. And 20 minutes later, they led 4-2. Rennes somehow would score two more and put it level in the last 10 minutes. It looked like a draw for Brest. However, Brassier pulled the match out of the fire and scored a last minute winner to earn the most important three points of their season. The next two matches were incredibly underwhelming. They only scored one goal and drew both Nantes and Rems. Dropping points in that situation left them in fourth place on the last match day, leaving them little breathing room if they wanted to play Champions League football. So it all came down to Toulouse on whether they would secure their spot in the Champions League for the first time in club history. When the match went underway, Brest came out the games flying and piled on the pressure. Numerous chances, but they never broke through. The second half began, and in the first three minutes, they finally broke the deadlock and took the lead with this beautiful curler. And that was all the momentum they needed to keep on pushing. Six minutes later, Amavi doubled the lead for them, and Toulouse were stuck on the back foot. They nailed their final goal in the 90th minute to secure a 3-0 win and Champions League football for the first time in club history. Celebrations began throughout the Toulouse Stadium and even parades through the city. But the question you've probably been asking throughout the whole video is, how did they do it? What did Eric Roy change that made the team so successful? The main idea that Roy was implementing when he took charge of the Brestois job could be described as kick and rush tactics. Let me explain. He used a 4-3-3 on the field and his system would leverage the pace of the wingers and the physicality of the striker. Their defensive shape is a bit more simple when they don't have the ball, they drop in quick. They're less concerned with actually winning the ball and counter-attacking, but more looking to maintain a strong shape and hold off the opposition until there's a clear-cut opportunity to win the ball back. It's a very low-risk defensive setup. That's the main reason Brest have conceded the least amount of goals in the league. Lastly, in transition, they are not a super quick team whatsoever. They are pretty slow to play the ball and generally are looking mostly for the long ball so they can catch their forwards in behind. Brestois actually leads the league in long ball passes. Most of their goals come from composed and patient play, breaking through with the long ball to find their chances. This style of play is way left compared to how pass managers were running this club. And although this play style is straightforward and not very hard to break down, it seems to work in favor of Brest. And it's quite uncommon to see teams at such a high level playing so simply. Anyways, that about wraps up this video. I'm very curious to see how Brest will do in the Champions League next season. You think they'll go far? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.